Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. You know, I always talk about finding a bottle you love. Uh, we're getting into the spring and March March Madness is just around the corner. Uh, I had a buddy su uh, suggest I talk more about Rise. I decided to put together a March Madness style tournament bracket of all of the rye whiskey that I have to figure out what is the best rye whiskey that I have. I have a decent sized collection as you can see from from the picture here it's not the greatest ever but you know it's it's quite a bit so to be in the competition a couple of criteria one is it cannot be a finished rye so none of the you know rum finished anything like that that's that's just not allowed for this competition so it has to be a a straight rye whiskey a tennessee rye whiskey um, there might be some other variants but you can't have it be finished in something else so how i put this together is i took all of the qualifying ryes and I, I put them on the floor here in the speakeasy and I had my wife come in and I had her just randomly pick four bottles at a time. And she created four different groups based on those four different bottles. As you can see from the bracket in, in group A, her comment at the beginning was, yeah, sure, I'll help. So that's group A is the sure I'll help group. And she picked out the four. Each of the four groups has one additional special rye. It's a harder to find rye. It's either maybe it's a store pick I picked up somewhere. It's a limited release, like the Knob Creek cast strength is, it was a limited release. Um, the Basil Hayden 10 is limited availability here in Virginia. The Whistle Pick 10 is limited availability. Uh, the Bullet 12 year was a, a store pick I got up in Maryland, I think. Anyway, those are those are some special ones. So the, she picked out four and then on, into each of those four groups, I threw one of the special ones that kind of doesn't really fit into the standardly available. So in group A, uh, we have the Sure I'll Help group, which was the comment my ma wife made at the beginning. And then uh, I had her pick another four and she's like, oh, these are the, the short ones. So we have the short ones group. Then when we got to group C, her comment was, you want more, which I did. I wanted to pick out another group. So she picked out the uh, group C, uh, you want more. And then group D is the I don't care anymore, whatever, because I actually made her pick them up off the floor and put them on the table so I could see what they were. So that's how I got the four groups, and that's how they have the uh, each of the four groups with the four that she picked, plus uh, the one addition. Then the way we're gonna do this, uh, there's also four special rides that I've picked up over time. They're unicorns. They're not readily available to most people, or if they are, they're very expensive. And I didn't want, uh, I kind of gave them a boost up in the competition. And those are the unicorns. That's the the E.H. Taylor bottle and bond rye, the Jack Daniels single barrel special release cast strength rye, the Midwinter Nights Dram from High West, and then the, uh, the Kentucky Owl 10 year. Those are all very special bottles uh, and they're the unicorns. They're gonna fit into the bracket in a little bit special spot here as you can see. So we're gonna do a blind tasting for each groups A, B, C, and D. From each group, the top two will advance to the next bracket. Then for group A and B, you'll have the top two from there making four. And then I'm gonna do a special video where I do a best of the unicorns and I'm gonna taste just the unicorns and rank them. And then the third place unicorn will go with the winners of group A and B. And then the fourth place one will go with the winners of groups C and D. From those five bottles on each side, then we'll take the top two from each of the mid-level brackets and they will go up against the first and second place unicorns. And the hope is that we will determine what is the best rye whiskey I don't have every rye whiskey out there. My world, my universe as it currently stands, these are the ryes that I have. Today, we have group A in front of us. So let's go through group A. Elijah Craig rye, it is retails for $32.99. Uh, it's made by Heaven Hill, it's 94 proof. Don't know really how old it is. Couldn't find out any information about how old it really was. Here we have James E. Pepper, 1776. It's an MGP product retailing at $29.99, 100 proof. Don't know how old it is either. Here in the middle, we have High West Rendezvous Rye. It is a blend of MGP source and High West own distillate. Retails for $74.99 now and comes in at 92 proof. This position, we've got Russell's Reserve. Uh, retails for $39.99. It's a wild turkey product uh, with an age statement of six years comes in at 90 proof. This is the harder to find, kind of a special bottle. Uh, it's the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye, retailed for $69.99, comes in at 127 proof. It's about nine years, supposedly. It's a Jim Beam product. These were randomly picked by my wife. She knows nothing about rye whiskey. As you can see from the bracket, it's kind of spread out uh, all over the place, and that's okay. Uh, the best ryes will come to the top. Uh, they will compete against the unicorns, against those 
the bottles that we dream about and uh, and we'll see we'll see who wins so as I normally do I have five Glen Cairns labeled at the bottom with the bottles that they correspond to these don't necessarily line up with those right now because they kind of got mixed up as I was getting ready to film like I said everything got mixed up before filming as I was kind of moving things around down here in the speakeasy kind of a floral potpourri a hint of pine some woodiness nothing super strong there So this one has a lot of very rye forward characteristics. It's quite spicy. You get a little bit of cinnamon, the clove, the traditional baking spices. It's not super sweet at all. On the finish, the finish isn't very long, but on the finish, it definitely goes sweet toward the end. There's pot potpourri on the nose, but then underneath that, that spice, I'm getting some, some mild vanilla. Not strong or overly sweet, but just a very kind of a very pleasant vanilla underneath that getting the the nose of these is honestly probably the hardest thing for me but the nose part is not the most enjoyable to me it's the taste i love the taste so i'm getting again some floral on the nose with a hint of vanilla underneath that there's no woodiness or anything to speak of it's a little bit of a wood bitterness on this one very strong clove characteristic on it but it's got a lot of that potpourri floral front at the very front of your palate it does have a good kind of a spice in the middle but the, there's kind of this aftertaste that goes kind of a, an astringent, piney, I don't love it. I mean, overall, it's actually not that bad because the, the front part of it, it's pretty good. And I'm, I'm guessing after a couple of drinks that uh, that finish will fade into something kind of nice. All right. This is very light, very, very faint floral, nothing strong. It's just a very light floral scent. It has a sweet up front. And then it immediately kicks you in the mouth with this peppery, clove, baking spices explosion. So yeah, it's very, there's this underlying sweetness to it. It's not vanilla or caramel, just a syrupy sweetness. And then the finish is medium long. Ooh, that smells good. It's like floral with some sweetness, a little underlying caramel. I'm getting kind of this this banana bread floral sweetness that's actually pretty good so this one hits you up front with a, a bit of some sweetness some caramel a little bit of kind of a banana bread with spices this might be the knob creek i feel like this might have a higher proof the finish on this one just keeps going all right this one's got a very faint floral with a little bit of an oak might have a little bit this one might have a little bit more age on it than the others Wow, that's good. Wow, I think that's the Knob Creek. The proof, bam, rice spice, sweetness, charred oak. Oldest tonight is going to be the, the Knob Creek calf strength, which is about nine years. This doesn't taste younger at all. This has a really nice sweetness to it. It's got this kind of a peppery bite, but it's not spiky, really. It's, it's just, this is really good. This is, um, this is a very good rye. So normally when I do these tastings, I really have to go back and forth a lot and, and things can change over the course of the tasting. In this one, I kind of just immediately went to a, a set and I haven't been able to change it. It's literally been the same rankings as I first put them. So in fifth place, we're gonna go with this one. There was just kind of an aftertaste to it that I didn't really care for that much, didn't love. Fourth place, it's gonna go to this one. Third place to this one. And second place to this one. And first place to this one. So before I uncover what they actually are, um, let me say this. This one was clearly last place to me, my palette. These two were really close, and then these two were really close. I don't know rye as well as bourbon, so I really am kind of just guessing. Um, I'm gonna go with the Elijah Craig on this one just because normally I don't like Elijah Craig very much. The James E. Pepper, Russell's, Rendezvous, and Knob Creek. I don't know how I did. Um, I don't feel confident in any of these. Wow. So um, that's a surprise. That's actually really a surprise. I thought High West would have done really well. Fourth place, 1776. Of all the ones in the competition, I would say that 
the only one I didn't really like was this one, which is the most expensive one. The others actually were all pretty good, just different, just different, um, but pretty good. This one I liked. It had a, a very kind of a very light floral, easy to drink for $30 in a rye. That's a good easy sip in rye. I'm really happy with this for $30. I'm very happy with that one. Uh, third place, Russell's. Okay. It's got kind of a floral, it's a little bit stronger floral than the 1776. The 1776, I think, might be even a little bit sweeter. Like I said, I could swap these two. The Elijah Craig is still in it. Number two, Elijah Craig. This did way better than I thought it would. You know what, though? The Elijah Craig 18 and the older bourbons, it did a lot better than I thought it would. Oh, well, it got second place. So number one, Knob Creek Cast Strength. This is good. Honestly, this I don't feel like this cast strength at 127 proof drinks like 127 proof. Definitely it's higher proof than the others, but not by much and not that noticeable. For the first round of the competition, uh, the, the Knob Creek cast strength is going to advance as well as the Elijah Craig rye. Oh, that Knob Creek is good. Ah, there's a pininess to it that I just don't love with this. I want to like this. I like High West. I lived in Utah for years, and uh, I love the smaller distilleries. Anyway, I'm excited for the rest of this rye competition to go into groups uh, B, C, D, and the unicorns, figure out what the best rye is that I have, and then we'll have a baseline to compare all the other ryes that we pick up over the years, compare it to what, what, what's what been the favorite rye, and see how that changes over time as well. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, do so, and until next time, Find a bottle you love.